Today, we are going to talk about how to create a very simple UI with a button and some interactions. Bonjour à tous. My name is Alexander, and I am a marketing engineer for graphics based in Seoul, South Korea. So here are the steps we need to follow to be able to make a GUI from a computer. First start the GUI creation using TouchFX Designer. Once that is done, I will show you how to compile on CubeIDE to flash your created GUI onto your target board. So in order to create a new project, you can either click here with the big plus or click on the create button situated on the left sidebar. So here we will click on the big plus, which leads you to the board selection. So here you have two options. Either you want to make a simple GUI without a dedicated uh, hardware, which is also a good idea when you want to really separate the code related to the UI and your hardware. Because in any case, afterwards, you can easily include your UI into your, uh, another pieces of hardware. So you can click on the simulator or you can select a board. Here for this video, we will select a very simple board that uh, we use often, which is an H7 series MCU board. So we will take the uh, H7B3, for example, not the evaluation, but the discovery kit which has a resolution of 480 times 272. And our color depth for this uh, hardware, which can be changed, of course, but right now is 24 bits. You can also change your application name to something that is uh, better suited, like, for example, Now that it's created, we are on the canvas interface, which means that on this, in this rectangle, we can add a, a lot of different widgets. So here we will go very simple and we will add an image. So if you see at the top of the interface, you have a bar with different widgets you can select, or either you can also go to the all part and scroll through all the different widgets available. Another option is also to type what you need if you know the name of the widget. So here, I know I want an image, so I write I am, and then everything related to the text I am will pop up. Now I have to select which image I want for this image widget. So we have two ways of selecting images. Either you have your own images that are created by you or a UI designer, and they will be in your project folder. Here, we don't have any images, so we need to use something else, which is already available in the designer. We call it TouchFX stock. In this uh, stock, you have a lot of images that you can use, and this is what we're going to do today. So as we use PNG files, we need to choose the right resolution for our image. Since it's a background image, we need it to cover the whole canvas. Now we will add a button. We will also change the button look so that it's uh, good looking at the end of the day. So we have our button. Now let's create a new screen, which you can add by clicking the plus on the left side. We also add an image. And go for a button.
now that we have our two screens, we need to create interactions to be able to do something with our GUI. So to do so, we click on the screen we want to add interactions to, and we go to the interaction tab at the top right, next to properties. Here we will do something very simple. Uh, every time you click on the button of a screen, it will change to the other screen. So here I'm on screen one, so I want to switch to screen two. I will do the same for screen two. Now that we have finished our simple GUI, we have uh, different options, or I, I would say different steps. So first, we need to generate code. Second, we can check if the simulator is working properly. So it's a feature of TouchFX that allows you to, to try out your GUI without any hardware which is why previously I was talking to you about the simulator, because you don't need hardware to be able to test your GUI. So now we have our simulator. And normally, if I click on the button, it changes to the next screen. And vice versa, if I click on this button, I go back to screen one. Now that we know that our simulation is working, the last step is to try on some hardware. So to do this, you can either click on Run Target if your hardware is plugged and it's the right one. So here, as you remember, we selected H7 B3 Discovery Kit. So if you have it and you plug it on your computer, the Run Target will work, compile, connect to the board, and flash the binary into the target. If you don't have the hardware, uh, you have to stick to the simulator. And let's say you have a custom board. In case you have a custom board, run target will probably not work because you have to create a dedicated make file for this. So another option is to use the software we previously installed, uh, being CubeIDE. To run CubeID, simply go to your desktop and double click on the ID icon. Now that CubeID is opened, maybe you want to change the look of it because the dark mode doesn't suit your taste. So in this case, you go to Window, Preferences, General, Appearance, and here you have different themes. For this video, I will choose the classic theme, but you can, of course, change to another one. Now that it's done, no project is added to our CubeID session for now. So to open your project, go to your project folder. Here we have my first TouchFX project. Go to SCM32 CubeID folder and double click on dot .project. Now your project is successfully open, but we have two warnings. The first one is not that important and only mentions them that a wrong include pass is remaining. Since our project was generated from TouchFX Designer, this will not be an issue. However, the second warning can often appear and can quickly be fixed. So to fix it, right click on it, Go to Quick Fix and simply click on Finish. To run on target, click the spider icon. As you can see, my board was not connected. So before you click on the spider icon, 
make sure your board is correctly plugged to your laptop. Finally, if you press play, the code will start running and you will be able to interact with your board. Here is the result you should achieve after this short tutorial. Here we are keeping the UI simple to avoid adding complexity and keep the video short. For more in-depth information on how to make complex GUIs, you can check our documentation website and the other videos we made on this channel.